social media. Now, I'm going to say something I think might be a little bit interesting for you, and that's this. That in order to understand the good Catholic understanding of social media, you need to understand the Trinity. I hope that's interesting to you. Because in the Trinity, we can say this. God is communication. So pull up my notes for the talk today. You can see the second line there. God is communication. What do I mean by that? We know that there's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This has been revealed to us by the person of Jesus Christ. Only because God communicated to us that the man Jesus Christ himself is the Son of the Father, Jesus being the second person of the Trinity, and the love of the Father and Son being the third person of the Trinity, of the, of the Holy Spirit. Only because Jesus revealed that to us do we know that. But from all eternity, the Father has known himself. And in knowing himself, he was able to understand himself in Jesus Christ. Jesus is the personal knowledge of the Father alive in God's presence. There's never been a moment without the Father and the Son. The Father knowing himself perfectly is Jesus Christ. The Father communicates himself to Jesus so that Jesus is all he is. And in response, Jesus gives all back to the Father so that the Father and Jesus are one in a unity of life and love. That unity of love is itself its own person. Love is a gift of self, so much so that the self that is given is the Holy Spirit. So we have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. By definition, the interior life of the Trinity is communicatio, communication. Communication is literally broken down into the Latin word com, meaning with, union, unication, union. The gift of self to one another. From all eternity, communication has existed. And I had to learn this, if you can see in my first little line with my emoticon there, I had to learn this over these past four days whenever I was on a silent retreat. Yeah. Extrovert. Silent. Four days. It was amazing. One of the most important spiritual experiences of my life happened this past week, and I'm not exaggerating whenever I say that. But in order for me to get to that point, God had to force me to unplug in so many ways. Because you see, there was a time whenever I actually did a 30-day silent retreat. 30 days of silence. And that set the stage for me to have a sense of what a retreat is whenever it comes to silence. And so the 30-day silent retreat prepared me to have that... Can somebody find the lights? Somebody leaning on lights or something like that? What's going on? So, the 30-day side retreat prepared me to know about the 40-day side retreat. Thank you very much. And so, not the 40-day, but the 4-day. Whenever I was getting prepared for this about three months ago, I really didn't want to do a side retreat. So I literally called two other brother priests, and they agreed to go on this retreat we experienced with me. Well, we were going to go to a cabinet table on. One of the priest's families had this cabin. Well, about two weeks before we were supposed to go, that priest wasn't able to go. So the other priest and I decided to get a different cabin and still go down to Table Rock. Because I didn't want to be alone for those four days. I don't know why. I knew that's what God wanted me to do. But God is so jealous for us and for me that he forced me to be alone. It was wonderful. Because about one week before we were supposed to go on, that other priest called and said that he forgot we had something on his calendar and he couldn't go. So I literally was cornered into doing a silent retreat at Table Rock Lake at a cabin with only the Eucharist for four days. Now, not only was I there by myself, which is very difficult for an extrovert, but I also was asked by God to unplug. I literally left my cell phone and my computer at home. Now, my cell phone, I use it all the time. If you even look at my front page here, Max, for me to get from here to Table Rock meant that I had to have the directions on a piece of paper and use a paper map. Who uses paper maps anymore? <laughs> I had to because I was unplugged. In order for me to pray, I use iBreefery. This right here, this app, is the best app for you to get into the Liturgy of the Hours, if you know what that is. As a priest, I'm required to pray this every day under the penalty of sin. 
And now what's funny about priests is whenever they gather together and they want to pray their breviary together, they don't pick up a book anymore. Most of us pick up our cell phone and they push I breviary and pray the breviary together. And here it is right here. I can also have every prayer of the Mass in here, as well as all the readings and other prayers that are inside I breviary. But not only that, on this I've got my notes. So this is like my notes for today's talk. Um, I've got audible books, so whenever I go for a long drive for five hours, like I just got done listening to the Maze Runner on audible books, you know, it was really kind of fun to listen to that, but that usually happens. I listen to Pandora whenever I'm in my truck, because my truck Bluetooths, so I got an F-150, <laughs> and so, you know, my, my truck Bluetooths, and so I always listen to this. Right now, I think it's on Jack Johnson station. I like the Matt Maurer station for Christian music. If you get the K-Love app, you can listen to K-Love Christian music on, your, on that app. So this phone, for me to unplug, is for me to unplug literally even from my library. Because right here you can see that I've got Kindle. Now I'm in higher education right now, getting a degree that's very similar to a doctorate. It's called a licentiate. For four years I'll be taking graduate level studies. Last year I had to read 27 books. In the space of three months I have read 4,500 pages of reading. In the space of three months for this class. Of those 27 books, I bought one hardback. The rest of my books are right here. I'm able to get them through this. So for me to leave my phone is to leave my, all my books, but also this app right here called Verbum. This is a program that I bought that's a search engine. Now that search engine actually costs me about 2,500 bucks because it's a search engine that can take the Bible and connect it to any saint writing in the history of church by a click of a search. So it's a very powerful tool, but I've got over access to over 900 historic books in the, in, the, in the church's history right here on my phone. So to unplug was a big deal for me. So much of my life is intertwined in this tool that we call the phone. As a matter of fact, I sleep at night with white noise. That's my white noise machine right there. And so I had to go without my white noise on my little retreat, which itself was a type of little fasting. You see... God is communication, and he told me that he wanted my undivided attention for four days. Because not only does God, the Father, communicate to the Son, and in the love of both, they communicate through the Holy Spirit, they want to communicate to each one of us, each one of you individually, like he did to me this past four days. God wants to give himself. The only reason why we exist is because God wanted you to know about him. To know, love, and serve him in this life so that you can be happy with him in the next. <coughs> The only reason why all creation is here is because creation was the first Bible. It was the first writing of God that said, I exist, and all you have to do is look out the world and see how I exist. Every tree points to heaven. Every bird flies in my presence. God wants to communicate his love to us. And he made us with the same desires. See, I started this out saying that in order to understand the importance of social media for us is to understand that God himself is communication. Because the human heart desires to communicate. Why is it that we keep our cell phones, if we have cell phones, so close to us? Why is it that we check our messages, either Facebook messages or email on our computer, as often as we come home or every time we're able to get access to a computer? What is that part of us that's sitting there saying, I want to be thought of? You know, I, I think we've all had the experience of having a text message in the middle of like class or something like that. And you're like, Ugh! Somebody just thought about <laughs> There's an intrinsic compliment to a text message, right? Somebody, not even here, thought about me. <laughs> right before this first talk that I gave, I had a text message from my secretary, who's getting ready to go on a cruise. She thought about it. Hey, go on a cruise. Have a good one. Okay. Everybody's able to see the text message, because it's right in the middle of my talk. Communication is a part of the human heart. And modern methods of social media have given us the opportunity to create an incredible experience of, of being able to be communicating with one another, to be known and to be received by one another. As Jesus knows the Father, the Father knows the Son and loves them in the gift of the Holy Spirit, we want to be bound up into this sense of communication. And this is where the heart of social media comes unplugged. It is a wonderful, beautiful thing to share our heart, mind, and soul with one another. But you know what's interesting? I asked you a question at the beginning of this. What is the greatest sin possible using social media or a cell phone? And so ladies, what are some of these sins that we 
broke them down to. Very good. So we have three primary ones. We've got here, and this is from this, this, period. this period. So what you guys told us today is this pile here is all having to do with pornography and sexting. Okay, this file right here has to do with cyberbullying. <laughs> <laughs> and so cyberbullying obviously is on a lot of people's minds. This one here has to do with pornography and sexting. And sexting doesn't only include words, it can include taking pictures of oneself and sending them via t text message. This one here has to do with all sorts of vices like jealousy, envy, vanity, hatred, all sorts of things of this nature. And this one here is just sort of a whole bunch of different lists of, of things. So posting a picture of a person that you, that you don't like or assaulting other people, negative pics and things like that. Now, of all of those, we can say that there are some things that are more grievous and mortal, but I would not call those the biggest sin that has to do with social media. Let's talk about the grievous and social, the, the really serious ones. Cyberbullying. Cyberbullying can turn into a mortal sin. And the problem with cyberbullying is that it, we feel like it's out there and sort of distant. But if you've ever been the victim of cyberbullying, you recognize that words that are digital are just as hurtful as words that are personal. And cyberbullying is a coward's way of getting into a fight. You know, scriptures are very clear that if you have a problem with a person, you're supposed to go to that person face to face. But nowadays, I feel like many people think that if I've got a problem with a person, I can text them. Hey, you made me angry the other day. Hey, you did this. You know what? That's, that's hiding behind your digital media in order to avoid a hard conversation. Social media will never be able to substitute for the personal experience. It can support it. It is a beautiful and good thing that can support personal communication. But social media can never take that away from you. Cyberbullying is using digital media to manipulate another person's identity. And one of the things about social media that gives us a sense of acceptance is our profiles. You know, so many of you have profiles out there. I don't think I have a profile because I don't have a Facebook page. I've got Twitter, I've got Instagram, I don't have Snapchat, I don't have Instagram. But you know, many of us have profile pages. Do you realize that you are not your profile? You can never be a list of adjectives. And a list of adjectives, ad adjectives will never be able to capture the beautiful personality that you have. No matter how many times a person reads through a digital list of your likes or dislikes, of your wants or your wishes, they will never be able to know you. They'll be able to know about you, but they will not know you. You are so much more than your profile. And yet, you have to be careful. You have to protect what you're portraying yourself out there. Because there's many people who are trying to stop profiles. And oftentimes, people like to manipulate their profile to make them look like they're something they're not. You're a lovely, beautiful person. Do not try to portray an image of yourself that is not real. You are worthy of being loved for who you are as you are. And no one will fall in love with a profile page. But they will fall in love with you. The radiant personality that you have. All of the joys and sorrows that you carry in your heart. No matter how many words we spew into our Facebook. No matter how many times we tweet what we're doing on a given day, or we Instagram pictures of the coffee that we're having at Starbucks, no one will be able to share the experience as if they're drinking another cup sitting next to you. Cyberbullying is one way to manipulate another person's good name, but oftentimes we can manipulate our own good name whenever we think that our profile page somehow encapsulates who we are. You're so much more than who you are. And so many other vices can come through the social media. We can enter into jealousy and envy. And we can actually start thinking that other people's profile pages should be something I'm jealous about. You know what's funny about other people's highlight reels? You know, like all the best part of a person's life is that my day-to-day -day experience will never compare to another person's highlight reel. But we can remember, it's just their highlights. All the good things we may be reading about another person, they're just not posting all the negative things that can happen in our own hearts, minds, and souls. You are so much more than a summary. You are so much more than 250 pixels or letters, characters. You cannot be captured by social media. You can be shared through social media. 
but it's always to the end of falling in love with a person as a person. Whether that's in Twitter and Facebook on your computer, whether that's through emails, or whether that's using your cell phone in, in many ways. Among these sins that can happen, not only through cyberbullying or through manipulating our profile, another one of the most grievous sins is pornography and sexting. You know, this tool of a computer by itself is morally neutral. Your cell phone is neither good nor bad. Your computer is neither good nor bad. The internet is neither good nor bad. It is what it is. How you use it is good or bad. And one of the ways in which people are being manipulated by the cyber realities is through pornography or through sexing. So many people are taking pictures of themselves and posting them as if something private is taking place. There is nothing private about a post picture that is posted. And our internet searches, so matter, no matter how many times we search, try to clear our search history, we are opening ourselves up, not only perverting the other sex, but we're also opening ourselves up to exposing ourselves to scandal or shame. You need to realize that you are so much more than what can be found on the internet. And we need to remember too, taking pictures of our naked bodies and putting them on the internet, especially if you're underage, is a felony offense. And it is always a moral sin. Whenever we do so freely and knowingly, we need to recognize that God is here to show us a lot of mercy. But we have to have enough wisdom to overcome this temptation to send inappropriate things, either in words or in images. And we need to be cautious about these different experiences that we can have, because they can literally lead to physical activities that were also spoken of in what was written. Certain things about adultery, or even masturbation that can take place. All of this cyber reality, the devil can use it as a tool against us to lock us in addictions that have no place in our life. And I don't care whether you're a man or a woman, I want you to know that you should never be afraid to confess in confession anything that has happened to the native concerning pornography, sexting, masturbation, or any kind of fornication activity. Jesus Christ has come to forgive us of our sins. Do not be afraid of that. While we can say that pornography and these sorts of things are the most, what we consider, grievous sins, I would say this. I consider the worst sin, not because of grievous, not because it's mortal, but because of how widespread it is, the worst sin of things like social media is split attention. Now, it's the worst, not because it's the most serious. It's the worst because it happens to almost everybody who has social media. I don't know if you've had the experience. I've had the experience. I said they're talking to somebody, and then my cell phone, because I always have it on silent, vibrates in my hip, and I'm just like, oh. and I'm stuck. She's right in front of me. But who texted me? Somebody's thinking of me. She's talking to me. Oh no, what did she just say? But who's in my pocket? Was that an email or was that a text message? What am I supposed to do? How many of us have been? Specifically, invited friends to come over to your house or to go out for dinner. You're at a restaurant, and one of the friends is literally on their Facebook the entire time. Or you're in a conversation, it's like all four of you or five of you are routinely getting interrupted by somebody else's text message. You know what's funny about this tool of social media, this entire experience right here, is that it can be used to split our attention rather than to increase our communication. What can be used here is a wonderful and beautiful thing that can increase our communication. But we need to protect ourselves from that split attention that can really drive us away from a good communication. I've had a lot of experiences with that in my own life. Whenever I'm talking to a person, and that person gets a text message, and then you can all of a sudden see their eyes sort of glaze over, and they just stop thinking about anything I was saying whatsoever. They pull themselves off to the side, and they begin to isolate themselves. That's the reason why you need to shut your cell phones off whenever you're with your friends. And I know that there's a lot of people out there who to make it a pact that whenever they go out with their friends, their cell phones are in the middle of the table. And no one grabs their cell phone until after that particular experience with friends is over. I know some other friends who the first person to grab their cell phone pays five bucks to everybody else. It's a way to keep themselves honest in this. 
Because the worst, I believe, experience of cell phones or having media is it splits our attention. This can happen with a computer. How many times do we go to school if we have email or Facebook or Twitter? And the first thing we do is not go to our homework, but we go to our Facebook page or our Twitter page to see what's going on. And then we have to protect ourselves from all the feeds, because how much junk can we get put into good things on my Facebook that should never have a place on my Facebook page? <coughs> there are a few things that I want to say as far as just some tips. And these are the tips that are up here on the, on the board. Not in the hand when in the presence. If you have a cell phone, do not have your cell phone on you when you're physically in somebody else's presence. Try to put it someplace else. Get it off your body. Shut it off. Because the person in front of you demands your attention. And not whenever half your brain's wondering who just texted you, the other half is trying to hold on to the conversation to no avail. The next thing is illusion, the illusion of privacy. Why is it that people can sex or people can put out pornography? Because oftentimes they think that somehow nobody else is going to figure it out. But you need to remember that there is nothing sent, no text message, there's no Facebook page that is not sent through another server before it gets to somebody else's phone. You guys remember the entire scandal on Snapchat? Snapchat was supposed to be a picture that gets sent and then it's not recorded. And yet Snapchat itself got hacked. And all sorts of compromising pictures were sent out about all sorts of famous people because they thought it wasn't being stored, when in fact Snapchat was literally storing every single one of those pictures. It's an illusion that you think that your, what's happening on your cell phone is private. The other thing that you need to remember is that once it's on the internet, it's always on the internet. For example, whenever my, my sermons that I talk to you about, the minute that it gets downloaded, there are 17 hits. You know why? Because those 17 hits get hit by bots. And bots are digital, digital works that grab those media and it stores it somewhere. Even before a human person touches it, some of the listens are digital listens that aren't even human. That can happen to the information that's being sent through our Facebook, which always goes through a third server, through Twitter, which always goes through a third server, through our emails, which always goes through a third server. You are never private whenever you use your cell phone. You must remember that. So do not use your cell phone the way that use your cell phone the same way that you use passing notes in class, right? If you get in trouble for passing a note in class, don't try to pass a note on your cell phone. And think about it, if you have a compromising picture, you would never think of having that picture publicly inside your class because the teacher could come and grab it. Every time you send something digitally on your cell phone, somebody else can come grab it. You need to realize that. Not only do we want to get rid of the illusion of privacy, I've already said you're not your profile. I've already talked about cyber gossip, pornography, and cell pics. We have to protect ourselves from all of these things. You are your best defense in this. But you know, there's something that's very important, and it's this. It's trident rising from the sea. Now, what do I mean? You know, in scriptures, there's a great passage that says, where sin abounds, grace abounds, all that much more. Did you guys know that the industry of pornography makes more money in a single year than all professional sports combined? Did you know that? More money in a single year than all professional sports combined. Now what's interesting about it is this. If where sin abounds, grace abounds all that much more, I am convinced that social media and the internet will be used by Jesus Christ to spread his word. Because just as all these negative things are out there, I'm getting about ready to show you so many positive things that can take place. And I have already shown you the books that you can get and the audio books that you can get. These are windows to the gospel and spreading the gospel message. And so many good things happen. Sarah Swafford is able to be in Australia because of that. One of my followers lives in England whenever they get my homilies every day. Because of this social media tool, God will use this. And if the sin is as great as it is, how much more will the victory be? It will be amazing. Because in the end, the human heart will not stand the perversions that can take place. And humanity with the grace of Jesus Christ will overcome these. 
And so I asked you a question also at the beginning of this. We're going to start moving into this great triton rising from the sea. I asked you about apps. What apps or websites do you use? And before we get there, I want you to explain this whole triton rising from the sea. You know, the sea is anything that oppresses or that you can be buried under. Rising out of it is victory. And that actually comes from a line in a, in a passage by a, a poet called Woodsworth. And this is the poem. The world is too much with us late and soon. So listen to this. The, the world is too much with us. We have to be careful about being in the world, not of the world. Our being, yeah. Getting and spending, we lay waste our powers. Little we see in the nature that is ours. We've given our hearts away a sordid boon. This sea that bears her bosom to the moon. The winds that will be howling at all hours are upgathered now like sleeping flowers. For this, for everything, we are out of tune. It moves us not. Great God, I'd rather be a pagan suckled in a creed outworn. So might I, standing on this pleasant lee, have glimpse that would make me feel less forlorn. Have the sight of Proteus rising from the sea or to hear old Triton blow his raven horn. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Thrust into the earth, he rose. Buried underneath dirt, he rose. And no matter what's happening on the internet, the victory of Jesus Christ will overcome, and it will be used to proclaim the gospel message of Jesus Christ. And it is reaching us through these same messages. You yourself can fight for your faith on your Facebook page. You yourself can stand up to the battle. You yourself can sit there and say proudly, I am a Catholic, and I live my Catholic values. And when someone challenges the meaning of the Eucharist, when someone challenges the ability to have sins forgiven, you yourself can proclaim the great gift of the scriptures that we have whenever Jesus said, this is my body, this is my blood. And when he said, whatever sins you forgive can be forgiven. And so whether that's through your Twitter, through your Facebook, whether that's using the Instagrams that you have, to be able to uplift people, the spirit of Jesus Christ is so important. But let's look at some of these apps. So what apps did they say for us here? I agree, agree is an app. Uh, the Daily Bible Verses Bible app. Daily Bible Verses Bible app. Laudate. How many people have Laudate? I'm going to give you another app that's really good. Catholic Bible. Catholic Bible. Awesome. So I asked you to do that because I'm going to make a list of all of these. And I want you to see some more. I've already shown you here on my home screen the I agree agree. But I want to go over now too. Notice this one here. It's called Saints for Kids. So if you have little brothers and sisters, this is a real fun one. Because it actually gives you colors that you can <coughs> pictures that you can color. You can print these out on any printer. Um, there's also Vatican PA. This attaches you to the Vatican website. That one there is actually in Latin or Italian, so you might want to try to find the English version of that one. Saint Today is a rock and awesome one for yourself. Every day we have a saint, and you're able to look in this about the story of their life, and so you have all sorts of things that can happen there. Missio, this particular app follows Pope Francis. And so you can see here that there's some things that are written, like this one, or there's some things that are video, like this one, and you can watch Pope Francis. And this is literally like a day-to-day -day update on what Pope Francis is doing in his life. You have masstimes.org, and that can be on the internet as well as an app. So anywhere in the world you can find your mass time. Um, the Catholic Bible is there. One that I strongly suggest even more personally myself than Laudate is IPA Top. So this particular app here, it's $1.99 no, on the iPhone, and I recognize that sometimes we don't want to buy apps. This one here is way worth it because this is a list of all sorts of books, including the writings of St. John of the Cross or Introduction to the Devout Life. You can read these Catholic spiritual classics right here on your phone. But not only can you read them, if you go to this app here, which is not specifically Christian, but it's called Libra Vox. <coughs> Libra for read and Vox is voice. These are audio books, and these four books right here are the books I just talked about that were, you could read in the one app. You can listen to somebody else right here. So whenever you're working out or something, you can actually put spiritual books in your ears and listen to them. <coughs> LibraVox is totally free. Totally free. And I've actually listened to some of my homework on LibraVox. You do have the Laudate app, which is a very popular Catholic app. 
One of the challenges with Laudate is that the translation of their Office of Readings or the Divine Liturgy, the Liturgy of the Hours, is not the right translation. That's why I use I Brief rather than Laudate. Truth and Life is a $20 app. <coughs> However, it is a dramatic audio reading of the entire New Testament. And so if I go to the Bible right here, and I hit this New Testament, all the New Testament right underneath there, every single one of those is read by actors who act out vocally the entire gospel. Change, I, I have a master's in scripture studies. This changed some of my understanding of what scriptures were. The Old Testament is not audio, but you do have the Old Testament here. Plus, you have a lot of things like Father Barron. Um, he has his stuff on here. And uh, like Word on Fire and other things like that. It's called Truth and Life. You have the EWTN app. How many of you have the Confession app? See, so you guys don't have that either. There's like several apps on your phone that can help you go to Confession. You can have a good examination of conscience on that. Um, or the Steubenville app. How many of you have been to Steubenville? So this app here would let you get hooked into all the audio recordings of the Steubenville conference that you went to. How cool is that? And it has all of them from last year. We're getting ready, my, my group's getting ready to go to Denver this year, and we're thinking about going to San Diego next year. Wouldn't that be cool? It'd be about 450 bucks if we go. Woo, it'd be fun. Um, here's some other apps that people are aware of. And this one here is called, um, oops, sorry. Let me close that out real quick. This one here is called Honor Your Inner Monk. It's put out by a monastery. And this is really cool because you get points for praying. So if you follow this app, it will actually start storing up how many points that you've had as you pray. And then you'll be able to see, you'll see after it goes through this little incense thing. So the morning prayer here, and then whenever you push amen, it'll actually sing amen for you. It's kind of cool. Lent Sanity. This is all sorts of challenges. You know, like we have insanity. Well, this is called Lent Sanity. All sorts of challenges for Lent. So like this one here is sleeping on the floor one night as a, as a discipline. This one here is the total consecration of Mary. How many of you know the 33-day consecration of the Blessed Virgin Mary? All right, you can have it right here on your cell phone. There's a whole bunch of those 33-day consecrations actually on this. Women, She Reads Truth. This is a Bible app for women specifically, especially for young girls. So I, 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 would, I, I don't read that one, but it's been recommended to me by another girl who reads that. I've already showed you the two prayer ones. How many of you are athletes? Here's an app called Athletes Blueprint. And Athletes Blueprint is an access for you. So if it's on the field, adversity on the field, here's several scripture passages for adversity on the field. So you can turn your athletic experience into a prayer experience by Athletes Blueprint. It's a very good app from what I've been told. In the 40 days, this year we're in the middle of Lent. This is a Steubenville app for 40 days for us to be able to, to engage in the Lent discipline. We also have brand new. You're the second group to hear this, but the Office of Faith Formation has created its own app. And so now, you as this is created for you and mine. So as you can see here, you have the middle school events, high school events, college age events, and adult formation events. If we go to high school events, this is a list of all the high school experiences that are possible for you here in the diocese. And if you follow this through, like Clay, it's going to take you to a website that will eventually allow you to register and allow you to be able to get all your information on all of those different things. So that app is free. It's today is the day it gets launched. Since this is the first day it's launched, be prepared for some glitches because we're still learning how to do all that with the app. But the whole idea that I'm getting to you today is this. Social Media Unplugged is for the good of <coughs> communication. The human heart was created so that it can be given and shared in love. And so many beautiful and good things can happen through social media, and we have to protect and uphold those good and beautiful things. But so many bad things can happen. For those things that are bad, you can always receive forgiveness. Because you see, God himself is communication. The Father gives himself completely to the Son and completely to Jesus. And that's why I say to you, the worst thing that you can do with social media is allow your attention to be split. Jesus totally pays attention to the Father. The Father totally pays attention to the Son. And that attention becomes the self-gift that is the Holy Spirit. Every human heart is worth your attention. And while our social media and our cell phones can be used, 
to allow us to contact people, they can never replace the love that is necessary for face-to-face -face human interaction. Social media. Let us pray. In the name of the Father,